does the mind see that which cannot be seen? If space is not empty and indifferent, as Newton would like it, then what shapes space? The science of forecasting requires the ability to first determine that unseen guiding principle which subsumes any process, and then apply that principle to the specific case under investigation. Kepler, through juxtaposition of the faculties of two senses, the domain of sight and the domain of sound, was able to determine the principle. But how can two entirely different images, neither of which truthfully represents the cause of the sense perception, somehow in their combination produce a truthful idea of the cause in the mind? Gauss was able to correctly draw out this relativistic principle by explicitly introducing the physical tensor. The dot you see moving across the nighttime sky here is the asteroid Ceres. Obviously, we are observing the motion over the span of several days, 23 days to be exact. In 1801, Carl Friedrich Gauss took that tiny convoluted motion against the backdrop of fixed stars and used it to provide humanity with a vivid peek into that invisible world of principle. Here you see what we presume the asteroid Ceres might look like, moving on a Keplerian ellipse, with its motion uniquely determined by the same harmonic principle as the rest of the solar system, such as Kepler had demonstrated. But how would that principle now manifest in the specific case of the orbit of this new planet Ceres? How would we know it from that tiny arc we saw it traverse against the nighttime sky? Based on Kepler's model, if we were to take three positions of the asteroid, we would have a set of relations in motion, involving the relation between the Earth and the planet, the Sun and the planet, and that between the Earth and the Sun. Kepler's second law states that the area between any two Sun-to-planet distances in the planetary orbit will always be in proportion to the amount of time the planet takes to traverse that arc. A moving planet will traverse equal areas in equal times. The area is the time. Here, the green ellipse is the locus of the Earth as it orbits, and the blue is the locus of Ceres. But what relationship does this have to the contorted image we saw mapped on our celestial sphere? By definition, Every point on the sphere is the exact same distance from its center. Accordingly, there is no indication at all of the distances on our celestial map. Further, the nice ellipses of Kepler's model are replaced by an indescribably complex set of convolutions on the celestial sphere. Is it possible to conceive of a continuous function which connects these two images into a single concept? Is it possible to read one in order to understand the other? If we conceive of such a transformation, what would change? What would stay invariant? What if everything changes? If everything changes, is there any way to understand one image by means of the other? Specifically, is there a way to generate a picture of the Keplerian orbit of Ceres solely by observing the action in the night sky? Or is all knowledge hopelessly lost along with the distances as the orbit is wrapped on the celestial sphere? Perhaps understanding the transformation itself could give us our answer. Perhaps it represents the mental pathway from one image to the other. Watch again. Notice that the sun, which once sat lazily by observing each instant, itself has a locus that is not just a point, but is its own orbit. Take note of the orbit of the sun in comparison to the orbit of the earth before the transformation. 
but perhaps more curious is the orbit of Ceres. Previously, from the Sun's perspective, Ceres repeatedly blazed the same path. Now, since the Sun is no longer still, Ceres's orbit cannot keep its composure. This path we may now call the apparent orbit, since indeed it is no longer an orbit. A new measure is inherent to this domain, the constantly changing curvature of the apparent orbit. On a plane curve, curvature is measured by what is called an oscillating circle. The circle has a constant curvature which is directly proportional to its radius, so that as a circle gets larger and larger, it becomes less and less curved, until an infinitely large circle is perfectly flat. Likewise, a smaller and smaller circle is more and more curved. The curvature of any curve is measured by the size of circle capable of fitting inside the different portions of the curve. The same is true on the celestial sphere, except that here, the largest possible circle is equal to the equator, and is called a great circle. The radius that describes the deviation of the apparent orbit from a great circle, seen here, has an interesting double meaning. In the infinitely small, it is also equal to the volume of the pyramid which is contained between the three series observations. Now let's take a look at our swept-out areas in the Keplerian image. We see that we have a triangle which plays the same role. It is almost the difference between the triangular area subtended by the two outer series positions and the actual pie slice which all three encompass. As the observations get closer and closer together, this extra hat of a triangle begins to approximate the difference in curvature more and more thus becoming more and more closely proportional to the time to which the area is equal. But now compare those triangles, which are proportional to the times, and the volumes in our other view, which are proportional to the apparent curvature. there is almost a one-to-one -one correspondence. For every triangle, there is a corresponding pyramid, and we are tempted to see whether these ratios are actually equal. In fact, these ratios do become more and more equal as we move deeper into the infinitely small. We have, through our transformation, established an extended set of harmonic relations which now only require being put into words. The creation of the language to do this, to describe this complex set of transformations, and to keep careful track of the changes, as well as the invisible relations which stay constant, is most accurately referred to as the concept of the physical tensor. <laughs>